Hey folks, welcome back. I'm Dave and we're here in my shop where I build E-War guitars. This is going to be episode number 14 of the series where I'm building this Tele type guitar, tele ish looking guitar. Of course, it's a set neck, it's got P90s and it's got rounded edges, so it's not a tele, but it kind of looks like a tele. Anyway, uh, this series uh, was based on me using a CNC machine and learning how to use one. Of course, the CNC machine work is all done, but if you'd like to check any of that stuff out, you can see me learning how to use that machine over there. I'll post a link right up here and uh, you can go check that out, but then come on back because we're into the second part of the series on finishing this guitar. Now the first, uh, the first part we sanded the body all the way up to 220 and then we applied two rounds of Simtech sealer and it's looking really great. And the next part of this, in this video, we're going to work on getting the black base coat on the body and then we're going to shoot some candy apple red top coat on top of that. And the tricky thing about that is the candy apple red is a semi-transparent uh, top coat and so it, you're going to be able to see through, you're going to be able to see the black. I haven't done this before but I think it's going to look pretty cool. And uh, so I've got to be really careful and get the, the base coat uh, just perfect because you're going to see it through the candy apple red top and then I got to get the top coat perfect because uh, it just needs to be perfect. Anyway, then we're going to get some clear shot on the whole thing too. But I'm going to start off with sanding up this body and I'm going to show you the important things to look for when you're doing your final sanding before you get into your finished coats. And uh, we're going to get started on that right now. So let's get rolling with the video. Okay, so at this stage, what we're trying to do is we're completing our level sanding. And it's, we're using the same process exactly as we did in between the two rounds of Simtech sealer, but this time we're going to take it a little bit further. So just a, a quick recap, um, we've done two rounds of Simtech sealer and each round had two and a half coats. And I did the first round of Simtech, uh, it's, and you know I call it sealer, but it's not only a sealer, it's a grain filler as well. So after the first round of Simtech sealer, which was two and a half coats, uh, we covered everything really good, but there was still um, grain, deep grain marks uh, showing in here, and you want to get rid of that. Uh, so after the first round, we went ahead and sanded with this 360 grit super acylics. And if you'd like to see that, I'll go ahead and stick a link up there right now to, if you want to go back and see that video where we uh, sanded the body and, and sealed it. Uh, but anyway, so at this stage, we're going to follow the same exact process as we did before. We're only going to take it a step further. So a couple things we're doing different this time is one, I've removed the masking off of the fretboard and uh, which, which will reveal this edge right here of the end of the sealer because I don't have any sealer on the ebony fretboard. It stops right there at the top of those two, uh, the two, uh, three layers of veneer right there. So I stopped it right at the edge of the ebony and what you wind up with is there's a little slight ridge left from the thickness of the two uh, or actually five coats of the Simtex sealer. So in this round we want to make sure we sand that off really good along that edge and you're basically thinning that Simtex sealer down along the edge of the ebony to where you can no longer feel that ridge. So I've worked on this for a little bit already on the top part of this and I've got it all the way down up here to where you can't feel it at all. There's absolutely no, there's no noticeable transition in between the ebony and the, uh, the rest of the neck except down here I'm still working on I've got to work on this a little bit more. And the other thing I'm working on on this is after the first round, there was still some deep grain because walnut, uh, walnut has a fairly deep grain. It's nothing like ash or anything, but it's got some fairly deep grain areas in it. And I want to make sure that that is completely smoothed off or completely leveled. This is called level sanding, by the way. So, and I could see it here that second round, it took care of all that. So after the first round, we sanded most of that Simtech sealer off, which basically left it in the deeper grains, and we're trying to fill those deeper grains to where it's all level with the, uh, the higher grains. So we've gotten rid of that, and that looks good, and we're also going to get rid of this ridge on the side here. So like I said, we're doing basically the same thing with the same sandpaper, same everything. We're just taking this a little bit further. Okay, and then when we get around to the body, which we'll get to in a few minutes, I'll show you there too because where there's when you're shooting those larger flat areas you get orange peel in it and it, heck there's orange peel up here for that matter 
you want to get rid of all that orange peel and you got to keep going until the little shiny dimples are gone. And we'll get to that in a second, but for now I'm going to finish uh, sanding up this neck and then we will move on to the body. But the whole thing is the same. We're trying to get it to where it's perfectly level, smooth, without any ridges or anything. So when those top coats, the body's going to get a black and then a candy apple red and then the whole thing is going to get uh, a gloss clear on it and you want that to look like you want this thing to look like it was dipped in glass or something like that. So anyway, that's what we're working on. We're trying to get it sanded up to the next level. We're going to work on that. Now you can really start seeing that orange peel on these big flat surfaces and that is what we're trying to get rid of. And I've got a really uh, got a very bright light sitting right here casting across this top and that's going to really help me find those little shiny dimples I was talking about a minute ago. You can kind of see all that through there. I hope that shows up on the on the video. I'll try to maybe tilt the guitar around, but you can see all those shiny spots and even when you wipe it down and you turn it up into the light, I really don't know if that's going to show, but all those shiny spots will show and you keep working that on these flat areas till all that goes away. Notice too, I'm holding my sanding block perfectly flat on this surface. You don't want to just dig in with one corner of it or something, because then you're going to like create a depressed area in the surface, and you will see that when the clear goes on. So that's why I sanded all the edges with that uh, foam pad, where it was uh, conforming to the curves, and now I'm hitting it with the block on the big flat areas because I want this area to level out to where it is all at the same plane and all perfectly flat. And I believe we are looking good. So it is now time to mask off this neck and get going with the body. Painting, that is. Okay, so the next step in the process, now that we're all done sanding, we're going to need to mask off this neck. There's nothing particularly uh, challenging about it. You just got to be really patient, take your time. And I use for these edges like this, I use this. Uh, this is a 3M, it's a, a, like a pinstripe tape that they would mask off pinstripes in auto body. I've got quarter inch and this one down here is an eighth inch. I don't know if you can see that, I use eighth inch. So I'll start off oftentimes around these tight turns with an eighth inch. And I just try to be as careful as I possibly can to keep it exactly on the line. 
I've got my little exacto knife here, and that's a brand new blade I put in here. And I'm not going to actually knife through it. I'll just hold it exactly where I want to cut it. I'll hold it on there, and then I'll pull the tape up and cut it like so. That way you're not putting a cut mark into the, into the sealer that's already on there. So anyway, so that's what we're going to do. I'm going to do get around these edges first with the eighth, and then I'll go around that with a quarter. And then I should be far enough away from everything to use the regular wider masking tape, this stuff, and then the two inch. So anyway, that is what we're going to do. Okay, I think that thing is ready to go. It's ready to get hung up over there, wiped down, and we'll spray on some primer. Okay, so we're getting ready to shoot the base coat on this, which is going to be a black. I'm using this uh, House of Color. It's a DTS foundation. It's basically just to give a black base to the, uh, to the ultimate candy coat on top, which I'm going to use this uh, urethane candy right here. It's brandy wine is the color, and it's semi-transparent. So uh, I'm going to do a little test piece as I'm going. Um, I'm going to do uh, both sides of this thing, and I'm going to try it. I may do the base coat and then shoot some uh, pearl dust on top of it with the clear, and then shoot the candy on top of that. Or I'm just going to do the candy uh, straight on top of the black. So I, but I want to try it with that little pearl dust in there first to see if that'll look cool or if it's just going to be too much. But anyway, so while we're hanging up here, it's all ready to go. Everything's been sanded, uh, and I've all and I blew off the dust and everything. I'm still going to wipe it down a little bit of naphtha before we get going, and then we're going to start spraying it on. And I'll probably give it two coats, maybe three. And this is the gun I'm going to use. It's a Devilbus. It's the finish line, and it's got a, I think it's a 1.3 millimeter tip, and I'm spraying it about 40 psi. And uh, I just went through, I hadn't used the gun in a little while, so I just went through and took it apart and cleaned everything and making sure everything's working good. And Anyway, so I'm going to mix up a little bit of that foundation, that base coat, the black, and we're going to get rolling with it right now.
Okay, so we've got our bass sprayed on there, which incidentally, I think that'd be a cool ass looking guitar right there. Oop, got some dust on the back. But I think that, uh, I think that black, I'd shoot some uh, flat black on top of that clear, and, but I think that would look really cool. But I think it all went well, except for a couple of spots I got. Right here in the front, I've got some, like something splattered coming out of the gun. And I'd clean this gun thoroughly. I took the whole thing apart before I used it, cleaned it completely, and, uh, and put it back together. And, but something, it seems like that that, uh, that foundation, this black, kind of hardened up in the gun or started getting thick in the gun or something like that. And it was there was no time in between me mixing it, putting it in the gun, and starting to spray. It's not like I let it sit there for 30 minutes or anything. But it seems like it was kind of hardening up, and I got some splatters here, and I got some splatters on the front. Other than that, it really came out beautiful. But uh, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna have to go ahead and sand this. The manufacturer recommends uh, 600 grit, which I've got my 600 grit sheet right here. So I'm going to go ahead and sand this down. I believe I've got enough on there. I've got about three and a half coats on the thing. So I think I've got enough where I could sand it and get it all nice and smooth and get rid of those chunks of stuff in there without affecting anything and, uh, or without cutting all the way through it. If I do, I'm going to have to spray it again. Um, but anyway, so, uh, so I'm going to do that. And at the same time I was spraying it yesterday, now I didn't show you that, I did a little sample piece right here. Okay. So I just took this, and this is just a piece of mahogany. I don't have any... Uh, I don't have any Simtex sealer on or anything. I just took a raw piece of mahogany. I shot the black foundation on there, and then I started shooting the, uh, the candy apple red on top. But I did two different things. And I don't know, let me pull this light down here, see if I could show you good what I'm seeing. So this side, let me look at my thing here to see. Okay, so this side here, what I did was I sprayed black first, okay? And then I mixed up some of this uh, Perlex dust. This is just a white pearl dust. I mixed it up into some, some of this stuff right here, which just is a clear inner coat or a clear base. And I shot it on there. So I shot some glitter on this side first. And then I sprayed the candy apple red uh, transparent on top of that. Okay, and I, I hope you can see that because that's the color I'm looking for right there. That's exactly what I want. But I was hoping, and I tried this on the other side. So this side, I just sprayed the the black on there just like it's on the guitar right now and then I shot probably twice as much of the candy apple red on top of this and I really thought it was going to start coming through with the candy apple red but it just never did all it became was like shinier black that's all that's all that happened to it and uh, so anyway so that and I did that to determine whether or not uh, I wanted to use that pearl dust and the answer is absolutely yes so uh, so that was an interesting little thing I learned from that um, anyway so, uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to sand this body now with 600 grit paper and uh, 600 grit, this uh, sanding film right here. And uh, now we're going to mix up some of the pearl dust in the DBC 500. We're going to shoot a coat of that on there. And then we're going to immediately turn around and spray it with the uh, candy apple red, the brandy wine. And hopefully it all goes well and hopefully nothing comes splattering out of the gun. Another point, too, I wanted to make about that splattering out of the gun. I don't know what the deal was, but uh, so after I sprayed it, I took the gun back apart to clean because I clean each time, and I used lacquer thinner to clean it. And it was a heck of a lot harder cleaning that base out of there. It was almost like it was stuck on stuff inside. So when I did the, uh, the candy apple red and I did the, the pearl dust in the DBC 500, that stuff, I, you know, I rinsed it out, and it just came perfectly clean, everything like normal. Uh, but so there was something going on with that foundation. I don't know. It was, it was a couple years old. So although it had been sealed in the can and it seemed all right, it, the age of it may have had something to do with it. The, maybe the age of the hardener or something. I don't know. But anyway, but I think we'll get back past it. Um, so I'm going to turn the camera down. We're going to get this sanded up, get it hung back up and start spraying again. Thirsty for adventure all my youth, chasing all my freedoms down Liberty Avenue. Every time I hear a phrase My mother used to say to me Everything happens for a reason I get the feeling I need A little taste of home, home, home Just a little taste of home 
kitchen conversation Steam coming up off the stove Photographs down the staircase Showing our stories unfold And every time I hear a song My father used to sing to me So I'm pretty pleased with the way that came out. I'm, I'm looking in my phone down here to see. I'm trying to get the light on it just right so you can see that color. But I think it really turned out cool. I'm, I'm really thrilled with it. I did wound up doing three coats of the clear base. It had that uh, pearl uh, dust in there. And then I did three coats of the candy top coat, the brandy wine top coat on top of that. And I think I hit just the right uh, combination I was looking for. It's got that little bit of sparkle deep down inside. It's dark, yet when the light hits it, it hits that, uh, that brandy wine color. I'm thrilled to death. I think it looks really good. So the deal is with this paint, um, you cannot, uh, you don't, they don't want you to go more than 24 hours in between coats, or if you do, they want you to sand or abrade the surface. And I don't want to sand this candy top coat uh, for fear of scratches showing up in the finish later. So what they recommend you do is you, you could spray some base clear on there uh, and then you know a couple days when I get a chance to get back on this again because remember I work full time uh, I'll be able to sand that base coat and then continue on with uh, with uh, anything else I want to do the, the final gloss clear and all that kind of stuff. So so that's what we're going to do now but we're basically wrapped up with this video now I'm just going to spray a couple coats of clear on there the clear base and, uh, and that's going to be it. But I'm, I'm thrilled. I think it really looks great. I'm very happy with the way this came out. And I really like that rounded corner on the thing, too. I think it looks, uh, I think it looks good. So anyway, uh, that's it for this video. I appreciate you all sticking around and checking it out. And come on back next time, and we're going to shoot the clear gloss on this thing and maybe even get a chance to buff it up, too. Anyway, hope you all have a wonderful week. God bless you, and we'll see you all in the next one.